we have to talk about the breaking news of the day and stuff that's been breaking the internet my side of town especially when it comes to sneaker twitter streetwear twitter and yay twitter is adidas officially caving to the public pressure and terminating their deal with ye flipping yay and obviously the yeezy thing in general now some people would say or i would say i wonder if vanessa friedman is happy she was out here lobbying for balenciaga to drop him she was also lobbying for adidas to drop yay and now it's finally happened i wonder if vanessa friedman wherever she is is she happy furiously typing away on her laptop that yay has been banished from fashion and essentially banished from footwear in some capacity even though he's probably could come back especially with the purchasing of these factories that he's had um in the last few weeks or months and stuff that's been announced but regardless go back to the actual statement at hand this is courtesy of adidas group so you know it's official you know you got the herzog um what do you call it site there where the where the per pr thing came from october 25th 2022 this is on the pr site where they put all the press releases out and anywhere in general it's all you know official 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 tissue shit so you know this is 100 percent real adidas terminate partnership with yay immediately right and they put it like in the title immediately i think this does not tolerate anti-semitism and any other sort of hate speech yay's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable hateful and dangerous and they violate the company's values of diversity inclusion mutual respect and fairness after a thorough review the company has taken decisions to terminate the partnership with yay immediately and product production of and production serve yeezy branded products and stop all payments to yay and his companies Adidas will stop the Adidas yeezy business with immediate effect this is expected to be a short-term negative impact of up to 250 million euros to the company's net income in 2022, given the high seasonality of the fourth quarter. ALS is the sole owner, the sole owner, sorry, of all design rights to existing products as well as previous and new colorways under the partnership. More information will be given as part of the company's Q3 earnings announcement on November 9th. Now, to pick apart this whole statement, is interesting because the first paragraph I think is very telling because if you are paying attention some lady I forgot her name but this lady this lady that was on LinkedIn I think she posted a statement or a post and I think she was like the head of marketing or something and she was like oh what Kanye said was abhorrent really bad and I hope Adidas makes the right decision something on those kind of lines so I remember reading it thinking hold on this is somebody who's very high up in Adidas this is not like a marketing assistant or somebody doing like you know their version of like energy marketing or influencer stuff this is like a legit person that's been working at Adidas for a long time corporate person middle management upper management whatever it may be called so for them to come out and step out and say that on their public LinkedIn profile to me that was an indication that it was over and I don't know when it was actually posted. I'm, I hope it was posted a few days before, so it makes my point a little bit more, you know, um, uh, you know, clued in, whatever it may be. But if it wasn't posted on the same day, clearly they already got told as management that this deal was already dead in the water so that's interesting to see in that regard that they absolutely you know update people inside the company and let them know and then once they let them know they said they come out there and spoke what their piece but obviously the other side of it is that this lady didn't say nothing beforehand wasn't brave enough to really say to stuff with her balls but then the moment i just kind of gave her quote unquote permission that's when she stepped out and said what she said but again another thing we can go on about this our second paragraph about the fire review is interesting because I remember reading the first statement Adidas put out where they essentially said um, the uh, the partnership between Ye is on pause and we're reviewing it and then Ye did that whole like fuck Adidas thing they stole my design blah 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 at the time I thought the Adidas statement about their pausing the uh, partnership and this under review was a bit of a vague open ended kind of non committal statement where it felt like they were waiting for Ye to basically have a come to jesus moment and see the light and go on an apology tour and walk everything back so they continue making money with him because why not but actually what you're seeing is that there are people in that board or on the Adidas board who generally did want to end the deal ASAP and maybe the compromise and the sort of split decision was that they'd put it under review and see what he would be saying in the subsequent days and weeks and obviously the man doubled and tripled down and it went the way it went and it also makes me think about that one board member on Adidas who Kanye was speaking about. Do you guys remember? It was some Asian lady. Um, and I think he had a real bee in his bonnet about her. But then unfortunately for, for Kanye, that Asian lady who was on the Adidas board was also, I think, somebody who was linked to JP Morgan Chase. 
either she was or her husband was something to do with that. And it's no surprise that JP Morgan Chase kicked him out and Adidas kicked him out also, which goes to show how important it is when you're working with corporations to actually maintain your relationships, to cultivate relationships, to make people like you and stuff is really important. As important as it is to be super talented and be somebody that's going to obviously um, bring value to that agreement or that partnership or make them money, that's also important because if Kanye wasn't Kanye, Adidas wouldn't care about him anyway, I understand. But once you're through that door to keep that deal going, you really have to make sure that you're doing all the right political things, whether that's attending randomly somebody's flipping daughter's soccer game, whether that's going to perform at somebody's flipping bar mitzvah, whether that's just just being cool at the company meetings and kind of hanging around and maybe talking a bit more with people after the fact. All those little things actually go a long way to kind of keep that relationship ticking over and keeping it sweet so that if you do come into a situation where you're blasting off and saying some crazy shit, you've got some people who are going to ride for you in a boardroom when it comes to the vote thing but it looks like he had no allies whatsoever in that room or no one willing to put their neck out for him the other thing i thought was interesting about that point was that they said immediately they were going to end the partnership it wasn't something that they were even thinking about kind of changing something that could maybe maybe they're thinking of a way of like i don't know um developing and releasing whatever was in the calendar right now they're legitimately pulling stuff off the shelves pulling stuff out of the shops telling accounts to stop selling yeezy it's crazy and i think the guy um from complex brendan dunn dune the guy with the really corny moustache he actually said recently that he's got word from retailers and other stores who are basically being told by Adidas to pull all Yeezy products from their from their flipping shelves obviously he's a registered registered sellers not fucking resellers but still it goes to show that they're not even trying to squeeze any like last juices out of the Yeezy partnership they're legitimately severing ties with him in a way that you get severed ties with a company if you get fired under gross misconduct terms right they lock off your email they delete any flipping sign of you on the site you didn't exist prior and you're just dead to them completely this is the same way they're treating yay which is pretty incredible to see somebody of that level be treated in this way but it also goes to show that there are certain things you just can't say and if you do say the things that he says you're going to get treated horribly the other thing i want to say just as a kind of a style and brand guide thing which is interesting adidas when they write the name adidas even if it's coming after a punctuation it's always a lowercase a i just assumed it would always be an uppercase A after a punctuation or if it's the first low, you know, word on, in, in a sentence. But it's not. It's always lowercase. Don't you find that interesting? Obviously, if it's all caps, it's all caps. But it's always lowercase. Always. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, we continue. The other thing that I thought was interesting also was this paragraph here where it said the short term impact of up to 250 million euros. And I think people are hypothesizing that it's somewhere between $246 million, whatever it may be. So them essentially putting this in is obviously something to appease some of the stockholders and shareholders whatnot to basically let them know hey it's a big loss but don't worry um we're going to be able to bounce back off of it but if you add that with what ye said about yeezy accounting for 48 percent of the overall s online sales of adidas that's a huge huge hit they're taking so essentially the um, adidas's morality and principles are costing them 250 million this year alone that's what you have to keep in mind it's not for the entirety of the deal only this year alone is cost them 250 million and you would imagine that 250 million is definitely tied to bonuses and targets for some people in the boardroom so everybody is kind of suffering from this it's not only the stores it's not only them as a brand and their you know long-lasting beef and competition with nike it's also their pockets like people who are maybe counting on that money to take their family to aspen to take their family to fucking you know carbo to go to greece for christmas whatever they were going to do with that to buy their wives you know a couple of pair of new tits or a new horse those things are going to have to be put on hold because yay wanted to go out there and blame the jews for everything absolutely wild um so again should you give them credit for that sort of thing i'm not too sure and then the last sentence was another interesting one after everything they said here in the first sentence about owning about taking everything off the shelves this last, this last paragraph is really curious. Adidas is the sole owner of all design rights of existing products as well as the previous and new colorways under the partnership. More information will be given as the company's um, Q3 earnings call on November the 9th. 
So essentially, they own all the design rights for every Yeezy item that we have out so far, which is hilarious because this Kanye guy rants and raves about all the bad contracts he's in and the fact that the Jews have conspired to write him to put bad contracts and they're controlling everything with malarkey. But then it's also the same guy who turns around and says he doesn't read and takes pride in the fact that he doesn't read anything. and takes pride that everything that he does is done with a feeling, is done with a gut, is done with emotion. But so far... He's been, him, Joe Budden and Wale are basically um, world champions of signing bad deals and then crying about them after the fact, but then also wanting everyone to know that they're flipping geniuses in business, especially Joe Budden and Kanye. They, they don't stop talking about how genius level they are in terms of culture, in terms of business, in terms of you know, the corporations. But then when it comes down to it, and you actually see the details of their contracts and stuff and their deals they basically get signed into terrible deals that don't favor them in the slightest. And the thing that's really funny about this is that Kanye is quite controversial, right? There's nothing new, but he's always been like this. So I don't understand why somebody as controversial as Kanye would ever sign a deal that wouldn't give him an out if he did say something crazy or that wouldn't protect him if he did something crazy. Because essentially it seems like ALS have worked a deal in place where if he did anything that was dumb, because I think that the time they review is basically time for the people in HR and legal to comb through the contract and see where they can kind of wiggle out of. So I'm sure them terminating the deal the way they terminated it is essentially them terminating it for gross misconduct, which essentially might mean that they're going to try to get away or try to avoid having to pay him out of anything. So whatever he has now is what he has now. Hence why they made that point about we're stopping any payments. So any royalties, any subsidiaries, any whatever else he was earning on it, completely gone. And he used to brag about that often, right? He used to brag that, oh, I make more money on my shoes than Jordan does. The easy jumped over the jump man. You can't talk to me. I guess that's one of the kind of um, sweet, maybe karmic things that people have out there if you're not a fan of Kanye. He was out here saying to people that you can't talk to him if you're not a millionaire and now, or if you're not a billionaire, sorry. And now he's clearly not going to be a billionaire because a lot of his wealth was tied up in the easy and, um, you know, the projections of it for the future were just crazy, especially if it kept on increasing the way it did and he kept churning out amazing, amazing product after amazing product. Um, it would have obviously gone to the moon in general, I think. But the fact that he did what he did is kind of, you know, maybe scuppered it a little bit and maybe soiled or maybe ruined the reputation of the brand a bit. I'm not too sure if that's actually true. I think if he did decide to go on a bit of an apology tour and manufacture everything in-house, people would still queue up and buy whatever new thing he puts out there. He just has that mindless touch about him. But... I find that end bit really curious because obviously, number one, it pr it kind of highlights that Kanye signed a bad deal. Number two, it kind of also puts out there that Adidas are saying that we can do whatever we want with these designs. We're taking off whatever's on the, on the lineup now, but maybe when things cool down, we're going to put out another 750. We're going to put out a 350. We're going to put out some 700s. We don't care what you think. And if you're curious to know what actual designs Adidas actually owns under this agreement, somebody on the West Sub Ever, which is the best Sub Ever when it comes to Kanye West News, put out these, um, pat these pattern applications, I'm assuming, right? Um, courtesy... Uh, of Adidas that they were able to get because I guess they're part of the public what's that thing called whatever that word is called but these are basically it right so you've got 750s that essentially Adidas own <laughs> the flipping design rights to uh, you've got 350s also and the elements on it in terms of the stripe the sole and stuff um, some of the essence on the top the knit obviously on the top as well and then I think you've got here a dove with the same thing with the seam then you've got the foam runners. Um, they're also something that have been, you know, owned as design rights by Adidas, which is absolutely crazy. You've got the sole on one of these. I forgot what they're called. What are these ones called? These are called the Ventos, right? The one with the kind of weird upper shape on them as well. They're obviously owned by Adidas Design Rights too. You've got these bad boys, which haven't even come out yet, which are deemed to be what? Um, we don't actually know the official name of these yet at the moment, but... They're basically the shoe that Kanye wore when he was wearing all red at that kind of concert, maybe for Donda, the first album, actually. That made that what they kind of look like to me. And then we've also got an application again for the foam runner um, on the top as well. Maybe this is a, to do with the actual uh, top or the actual form factor of the entire thing. I'm not really too sure. But there's quite a lot here that they own the rights to. And another shoe also that they own the rights to is the, what's that? Is this a 700? What is this one? I'm not too sure actually the numbers of them. This is a 700, right? 700 Venter or something. 
or maybe I'm I'm mistaken. I'm not really too sure. But either way, there's a lot of shoes here that they own the right to. Fifteen years, fucking hell. So clearly they're flexing their their muscle and obviously reminding him who kind of his boss. And then to also continue this, we have a statement courtesy of Gap. Gap have also decided to flip and pull the plug on Kanye and get rid of all the Yeezy Gap stuff to the point where the Yeezy Gap site itself is basically down and points back to basically Gap um, and you have to select your region of where you're at but essentially the Yeezy Gap experiment is also over people have shared pictures of certain stores essentially selling whatever they have left on the shop floor and then nothing else is going to come in I've also heard that people are emailing customer services at Gap and basically asking them because recently the perfect hood re-released at $60 actually and people were buying tons of it and it was all getting shipped so clearly they're shipping out whatever you order now but anything else is not going to be made available so don't be surprised if you do see some Yeezy Gap products in in flipping TJ Maxx or TK Maxx and stuff I can definitely see that happening and I wonder if it may affect the resale price people might end up paying more for it I think that what happened definitely for Yeezy in general but this is a statement courtesy of Gap Inc and their press room it says in uh, in September, Gap announced ending its Easy Gap partnership. Our former partners recently didn't even say his name. Our former partners' remarks and behaviour further underscore why we are taking immediate steps to remove Gap product from our stores, and we have shut down EasyGap.com. Don't you find it a little bit funny? that these kind of, I won't say cancellations, but these sort of efforts by these platforms and corporations always seem um, always seem to be um, coordinated. Adidas basically said the same thing in terms of taking everything off and basically Yeezy Gap or Gap is basically saying the same thing too. They're taking everything off the shelves. They're not even trying to make it work. They're not even trying to sell what they have or rinse the entire catalog or release all the other SKUs that they're working on. No, no, no. Whoever's out there is out there. If you get it, you get it. But apart from that, we're wiping our hands clean of this guy. Um, and it continues to say anti-Semitism and racism and hate in any form are inexcusable and not tolerated in accordance of our values or our beliefs of our customers, employees and shareholders. We are partnering organizations that combat hate and discrimination. So clearly they're going to do a symbolic sort of gesture and give away certain money, amount of money to groups that basically um, fight against anti-Semitism, you'd imagine. The curious thing about this is that you would think that Gap were the ones that needed Yeezy more in terms of, you know, pulling themselves back into some sort of relevancy, um, pulling them back into the cultural conversation of product and clothing and shit, making them maybe a staple of people that want to go and buy, you know, basics in the in the shape of what Kanye was doing with Yeezy Gap and working with Demna in terms of the kind of sizeless, basic kind of drapery, big shit, whatever. It wasn't sizeless because you could buy size, but you know what I mean. That kind of big silhouette, um, easy to wear stuff with that kind of color palette. It felt like that was maybe something Gap actually needed but they actually didn't need it. It feels like, it feels like they were so set in their ways, which maybe caused the issues with Kanye in the first place because he was trying to pull them kicking and screaming into modernity, into the 21st century, but they were more than happy to kind of keep doing what they've been doing for, for, for whatever. And I guess so far it's been working. So they're not going to change it in any way, shape or form. And like I said before, Kanye didn't obviously ingratiate himself with the boardroom, with the people working there as executive level. And they just said, look, it's not worth the hassle. This guy's talented, but he's not the be all and end all. We were here before him. We're going to be here after him. And they basically did him and i guess this maybe is a lesson in that right you can never think you're that important really because when it comes down to it these companies will let especially when it comes down to them actually suffering any reputational damage off the back of it for free they're definitely going to be willing to cut you asap so that's definitely for sure 